Welcome to Talk New Market VA, a podcast hosted by the staff of the Town of New Market. This is episode 14. I'm your I'm Chris Rinker, the Chief Police, and my co-host, always Amber Smoot, the Events and Marketing Director. Hey, and, hey. Hey, Amber. And today we have a special guest, Ross Popular. Poplar. I'll he cut is that popular. out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> With the New Market Rotary Club, Ross, thanks for joining us. No, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Chris and Amber. We, uh, you sent over a, a informational sheet a few days ago, and I've been reading through this. Um, you realize he's like, this is like my kind of folk, right? <laughs> like he's got like <laughs> notes and like this is this is my jam right here. Yeah, I, I uh. For one, I appreciate you taking the time, or whoever took the time to to put this together. But no, it was um, a group effort. Well, I, I appreciate that because it it very beneficial to me, and hopefully our listeners will find it the same. I know that Amber and I both have been fortunate yes. enough and and have been invited to attend um, the meetings. I guess I don't know how long I've been going. It, it at least since I've been promoted, but before then. So I I have a desk full of rotary pens, pens. over here. <laughs> Hopefully they still work. They do. Um, <laughs> so. so I like to collect new market things. Sure. Um, as you can see around the office, you may recognize some new market oh, yeah. things. But uh, they're near and dear to my heart that I have my new market rotary pen collection. Cool. Because I think one of the first ones I have is maroon, and now we're the blue oh and silver. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have to change it up a bit. Yeah. But it's been a pleasure to have both you and Amber, because we know that uh, both you are Rotarians at heart, and quite frankly, we'd like for you to become members someday. Oh, yeah. so we just got, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep working. Yeah, on we that. just got put on the spot here, <laughs> but that's fine. So, Ross, tell us about Rotary. Sure. Um, Rotary really is a global network of uh, about one and a half million neighbors, friends, and leaders, and problem solvers who see the world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities like New Market, and in ourselves. The first Rotary Club was formed when attorney Paul P. Harris called together a meeting of a small group of business acquaintances in downtown Chicago in February 1905. The members chose the name Rotary because initially they rotated subsequent weekly club meetings to each other's offices, although within a year the Chicago club became so large it became necessary to adopt a now common practice of a regular meeting place, such as where we meet at Chandeli and Newmarket. The Newmarket club was chartered in 1927 and in five years, we'll celebrate our hundredth year anniversary. Wow, that's so, awesome. Which is pretty cool. So some of our members, Alan Johnson and others, I mean, they have been there a while and they have seen their ch- some changes. But it really is neat to have an organization in a community that's been there for a hundred years. I, I had no idea. No, nah, like, really. I, when I yeah. read that earlier, I was like, wow, that's, that's awesome. That, that's impressive. Do you, how long have you been involved? I've been involved for about four years. Um, actually, one of the Rotary's past presidents, uh, Ray Brownfield, I don't know if you know Ray or not, yeah. who unfortunately passed away uh, about five years ago. I think the first time I saw him, he said, what are you doing Wednesday? It's like, well, Ray, I don't know. He said, well, come with me to Rotary. So I came, and to be honest with you, uh, being in the military for 30 years, and then working closely with people in the Pentagon as a contractor and as a civil servant, I sort of missed that camaraderie that I was looking for. And I really found that at Rotary. It's nice because you have a group of men and women who are there to support and serve the community. So once I got a little taste of that, I thought, yeah, this is something I could, I could get into. So he introduced me to Rotary, and once I got sort of in the groove, the next thing 
was Dr. Street said, well, would you like to become our president? <laughs> it's like, well, Doc, I would love to, but I'm still working full time, driving back and forth from Quicksburg to the Pentagon each day. So let's wait until I retire, retire. So I did that about five years ago and had a little bit of a, a break to fix up our farmhouse. And uh, then took Doc Street up on his offer and I've been the president for three years now. And it's been a, an extremely rewarding and valuable experience. Yeah. I, think, so, I think you're doing a great job. Okay, well thank I think, you. <laughs> I really do. Um, okay. I think it's amazing, you know, Sometimes and we see it in a lot of organizations, and I'm not, I'm not putting anybody on blast oh, or no. anything, but um, where people don't show up. And I know that even for me, I appreciate when you show up at events just to be there to show support for a community event. Sure. Um, and if it, the Rotary is doing anything, even if maybe you're not in the heart of um, like all the planning or doing it, you show up and you're always there. Okay. So. Well, well, thank you. And I mean, it takes a lot to make things happen. Um, again, we pride ourselves at making an impact not only on the world community with eradication of polio, but I think more importantly within our own community in the town of Newmarket. And as an example, last year we donated over $33,000 to local charities, school scholarships, food banks, the community child care center. But it takes a really a dedicated team of members. And one thing that we ask is if you become a Rotarian, uh, that you contribute and become part of that effort. And there are a, a core group of Rotarians, uh, Jim Douglas, Peter Hughes, Jefferson Burgess, Sandra Clotterbach and others. And I apologize if I've left anybody out. But they're really the drivers that make things happen. Our big fundraiser, our golf tournament in September, and our Labor Day run. So, but it is good. I mean, when you sit back, especially for me, one thing I like doing is I like going to the schools where students have, I won't say been awarded, but have earned scholarships and to present them with a check and to see that smile in their face that, you know, I really think our organization made an impact in somebody's life. And that's uh, very rewarding and very refreshing. Well, I, I know I can relate to what you just stated. Um, a few weeks ago when I was invited, there was a award recipient of your scholarship from SVA there. Wow, okay. And if you yeah. remember, the young gentleman, he, it impacted him. Oh, it and, did. and he, his, his speech, thank you speech, matter of fact, I was like, I don't know what else I can say to top him. Like, <laughs> And you were the guest speaker? Yeah, and I'm like, well, I mean, and, and I'm, now? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but I was like, I don't have anything else to say, y'all, thanks for paying for my lunch, I appreciate you, but I'm just going to go on, or back to the office, but he, um, he, he will be a, you know, he, he has the, the aspect of a potential leader you could oh, hear yeah. it and see it and um he was very thankful for that but yeah i could i can put validity to what you, okay. you just said i've seen it with my own eyes no and even though he's not a rotarian he's what we like both you and amber you both are rotarians at heart we know you've got full-time jobs and you're busy and may not be able to become a this stage in your career or life Rotarians, but both of you have what really what we're looking for, and that's somebody to give back to the community and their own family. Our motto in Rotary is service above self, and we mean that sincerely, that uh, we believe that uh, God has put us on here on earth to serve our community, so that's what we all try to do. Some people do it by writing a check, some people, like me, may me not be able to write a check, but I can pick up trash or flip hamburgers. So that's 
that's what we do. You know, going back to the school, the school part of it, um, one thing I get to do is work with the Interact Club. Oh, you do? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, the Interact okay. Club, because they help with the Easter egg, the yes, our annual uh -huh. Easter egg hunt. And they're such a wonderful group, and I think that the Interact Club is a great club for them to get into because it really does hone in on those leadership skills and allowing the kids to get out in the community and answer sure. um, and volunteer for these events. And you can just see the kids, I almost say, hate to say kids because when they come in there, you know, some of them are like almost eight, like 18 and look super grown, but learning those leadership right. skills and you guys, you know, with you, through that club and your, your sponsorship and helping them along, um, you know, helps them. So No, and that's a good thing for us because as an old geezer or dinosaur like myself, <laughs> we hear so much from the media about today's youth and they don't want to get involved. But when you go over to Mountain View and you're exposed to a club like that, I mean, I'm just in awe of these young men and women as to what they do, the Easter egg hunt, letters to Santa, to be a member of the Interact Club, uh, Lisa Gibson, who's a superb sponsor, requires that they do a certain amount of community service, and I've run into them at different food pantries in the county, and I'll introduce myself, and they'll be quick to say, hey, I'm from Mountain View Interact, and I'm here to you know, give back to the community. But uh, it just sort of renews your faith in the youth of America to go over mm -hmm. and deal with you know young men and women like that so we try to help them on their way by uh, giving them uh, it may be a small scholarship but perhaps defray some of the costs that will enable them to go on to college but those but those traits those characters those traits that they get to learn you know being in the club and what they learn in those community service roles they're going to walk away with so much more than sure. than money that's going to last yeah, them their right. lifetime. Yeah. And they may not know it yet, but it will help them in the long run. So a lot of times kids don't have those those clubs or those places where they feel they belong and by allow having that sure. club there and giving them, you know, those stepping stones to become so successful is great. And and like you say with the speaker that you heard at our meeting several weeks ago, a lot of times we learn more from them, yeah. I think, than they learn from us. So it is very refreshing. Uh, and you ask how I got into uh, Rotary. Initially in the Valley, it was being approached uh, by Ray Brownfield and Dr. Street. But uh, not to date myself, but I was an Interact club member at, in my high school in Maryland back in the 60s. So I've got very fond memories of being involved in community projects, service projects. So it's almost like full circle to 50, 60 years later. <laughs> yeah. I was once an interactor and now I'm back in, in Rotary. Nice. So I know that you meet every Wednesday at the Chenvalee Yes. around lunchtime. Correct. Um, and then it's the meeting, but you, you mentioned that your big fundraiser is September, this past September, the golf tournament, um, and then you have the, the run walk. That's, that's correct. And then also periodically, um, if there are special, not special or unforeseen events like Ukraine, where our members got together and donated in excess of $8,000 that was matched by our Rotary District. Um, if there are events throughout the year, the tornadoes that we had in Kentucky last year, we'll have special fundraisers in an effort to, to meet emergent needs like that. Okay. So that's great. And on the this super nice document you provided to Amber and I, which Amber knows because you are very helpful in the Independence Day celebration. Sure. 
that here at the park, the fireworks event. And and this year, Crossroads helped me yes. out. Yes, that's so, a great. I think so, that's a great partnership. Oh, it's it's awesome um, because no. you guys helped me out, but also then you guys, you know, I also give you guys a percentage of sure. what we get, yeah. but which is great because then those that funds not only go to the Crossroads Music Fest, which is for the community, but some of the funds go to Rotary right. as well. That, that go back into the community. That go back into the community. Right, and, so. and I, I proudly tell people when they say, well, where do my dues go, or if I contribute to Rotary, where it goes? Every cent, it may not be within the next two or three weeks, but within a year, every donation that goes in the Rotary is turned back around and pumped back into the local community. So I know some organizations have overhead, but we're a completely volunteer organization. So anytime that you give to Rotary for any charity, any event, uh, we'll turn that back around and pump it into the community. And we also have the advantage, whereas our it's called Rotary District, which is comprised of Rotary Clubs in uh, Eastern Tennessee and Western Virginia. We'll, we can put in for what's called a grant, and if it's approved, they'll match that grant. So as an example, this past year, the Rotary Clubs of Woodstock, uh, Mount Jackson, Edinburgh, and Newmarket put in for a $30,000 grant to install a playground at the Seven Bends State Park. So that grant was approved. So this last year, uh, we, uh, three clubs, and we're gonna have a dedication ceremony this Wednesday, uh, put together a very nice uh, playground up at Seven Bends. So again, that money was only uh, came into us, but through the district it was matched. So in essence, whoever contributed, if you had to sort of trace the molecule of money, that money was doubled by the efforts of uh, putting in for a district grant, and the district matched our grant. So. And that that's wonderful. And I also know that you park cars and help with the yes. um, music festival at Tremont. And before Amber got here, you were telling me your involvement in the 250th birthday of Shindo County, which I know that Amber is involved in that. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of things that Rotary does for the community and in the world that uh, maybe someone doesn't doesn't know that. I mean, as an example, through the efforts of uh, Rotary, and as we said before, Rotary has been around for over a hundred years. Rotary has taken on as one of their main projects is to eradicate polio in the world. Um, so over the years, uh, we've partnered with different organizations. We're currently partnered with uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Rotary is essentially responsible for eliminating uh, polio, which I grew up in the 50s. I mean, it was a, a very crippling disease, but Rotary is responsible for exporting that vaccine overseas and in some of the third world countries in Africa, uh, Eastern Asia, Afghanistan, uh, some of those areas. And uh, Rotary is pretty much single-handedly responsible for eliminating polio worldwide. Wow. And uh, every October we have a polio awareness event where again we attempt to educate the public uh, through newscasts, articles, public service announcements as to how they can help can, can contribute. Uh, and quite frankly, some of our older members uh, who grew up in the 40s and 50s remember polio it used to be a terrifying disease. I mean, there was no vaccine. And if you contracted polio, you were doomed pretty much to a life living in a iron lung because you lost your ability to breathe. So uh, we being the New Market Club and Rotary International is very proud and our efforts to eradicate polio, and we're fairly close to doing that. That's amazing. So, 
I just think it's amazing how organizations, people, you know, just people Pardon. can just come together and do such huge things. Sure. And and that's what we need. I know that the Rotary is always looking for, um, you know, new Rotarians right. and people to come on board to help out with all of your your endeavors, like sure. things that you guys want right. to get accomplished. And, and no, and, and we're fairly flexible. Rotary, like any organization, has changed over the years. Uh, initially, uh, to be a member of Rotary, you had to be a male. Uh, it was open for men only, and Rotary, uh, before my time, but eventually realized that men and women are equal and have opened up uh, their membership to both men and women. It, at one time, was very selective as to who was admitted to Rotary. That has changed. Our only requirement is that you're willing to, to jump in and, and help us out. And one thing we're looking at um, in the New Market Club is creating corporate membership for organizations, perhaps like the town mm -hmm. of New Market, Life Care, some of the other large corporations that are here, where a corporation would simply determine the number of people it would like uh, to become Rotarians and would pay a flat fee. And that way it would give them some flexibility as to rather each one of those individuals attending every meeting, they could sort of weave in, in and out of the pattern as, as they could. I so. think that's a really good option. Yeah. Um, and especially because there's, there's lots of different bigger corporations that have like community service hours right. Right. that they allow their, their employees where they'll pay them for, you know, however they have it set up, say like six hours, eight hours of community right. service. And if they have some place like the right. Rotary that they, you know, would like to do that for and sure. say, hey, this is a, a viable option for your community right. service hours, then. And, and the one thing that's good about Rotary is we've got a lot of uh, people from different backgrounds, a lot of corporate expertise. You've got individuals like Skip Constable, who was a former mayor of Newmarket. Yep. Um, Alan Johnson, who essentially created the banking system in Newmarket. Sandra Clatterbach, a registered nurse who, uh, in her prior life, had oversight of a number of nurses. So it's good to have younger people come into Rotary because they get exposed, they get mentored. Uh, there are people there that have done things, been places that can help, you know, bring them along as leaders. And that's really what we're looking to do. It's a two-way street. We're looking for people to contribute, but on the other hand, we're there to, to help mentor and to develop them as leaders as well. So. Good stuff. We appreciate Rotary. I know we do. Um, we as in the community okay well, I know that for like for me I didn't know what the rotary was <clears> about before I came on um, to work here five years ago I really didn't I knew about the rotary sure. and you always see going into towns you see the logo and the little like, wheel. like little <laughs> wheel you know and um, since I've been here and I've been able to come to meetings and sure. I've met so many people that are Rotarians and have been able to have you know, the opportunity to work with you guys um, I've I'm really kind of kind of blown away about the organization yeah. just in general and then as I as I look at the wheel it just always reminds me of like a cog like right. in a system and you're talking about how you know when natural disasters happen whether it's like hurricanes tornadoes sure. or whatever you guys kick into gear and everybody comes together right. just like a whole bunch of cogs and they just start working working at it and, and getting these things done to help you know not just our local community yeah. but um, nationally and worldwide I think it's pretty Pretty interesting. I, I know this wasn't a pun, but you just <laughs> dropped a real good one by kicking yeah. it in gear with the wheel and the cog. Yeah, you like that? I did. <laughs> I did. Thank you for picking that yes, up. Thank you. I, I have to. I have to cut Ross. Yes, I have to cut Ross off and no, give rec fine. to <laughs> recognition to that. But that was uh, that was well said, Amber. Thank yeah. you. I have moments, y'all. Yeah, but I, I, re I really and truly mean time. that, though. I really no, and truly mean that. That's good. And 
You know, one thing too, unfortunately, as we all know, the country is so divided uh, politically, whatever. But one of the ground rules that we have for Rotary, it's a non-political, non-partisan organization. So we, we don't talk politics. Everybody sees each other as a fellow Rotarian. And quite frankly, I, I tell people we've got to leave our politics at the door. We're there to serve the community, not to discuss politics, religion. And uh, we have had speakers before that have tried to, to go in one direction or the other. And quite frankly, we just have to sort of put the brake on that. And I, I think everybody's aboard with that. Um, and uh, I, I just, I, I'm glad that I am a part of an organization who can look above some of the, for lack of better words, foolishness that's going on in the country and serve the greater good of the country and put politics aside. So one thing that I think needs some recognition, um, I did do a little homework before you got here and um, <laughs> checked out you, are some... Are you going to arrest me now? No, 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 no. Checked out some social media and... Uh, I almost spit out my coffee bro. <laughs> checked out some social media and checked uh, your, your Facebook page, but you are the recipient of the Paul Harris Fellow Recognition in 2022. Yes. Uh -huh. um, and I, there's a, a really detailed list starting with Mr. Johnson in 1991. Um, being around here for a long time, I recognize there's probably not too many people in there that I don't know, but can you tell us about that? The uh, Paul Harris Fellow Award is... Uh, bestowed upon an individual in Rotary essentially for either their contributions within the club or their community. So a number of our members have received the award for contributions they've made within the club. But on the flip side of that, members outside of the club, uh, Carol Douglas, Carol Hughes are both awarded the Ball Harris Fellowship Award last December are recognized for contributions they've made in the local community. So it's a way that Rotary, it's the the highest, one of the highest awards Rotary can designate. It's a way for us to recognize those within the club or those outside of the club um, that have helped the community out. As a matter of fact, uh, we had a board meeting a couple weeks ago and uh, we are going to award the award to several individuals that are not Rotarians, but based upon what they've done in Newmarket and Shenandoah County, we believe that they deserve the recognition. Wow. That, That's awesome. Yeah. And I would encourage, if you're listening to this podcast, to, to check out the Rotary homepage, webpage. Um, it's NewmarketRotaryClub.net. But check that out. And I know that you have a Facebook page, yes. Rotary of Newmarket, Virginia. But there, that list of past club presidents starting in 1927 um, and, and going on down through the list there is, is it's interesting to me yeah. and the, the Paul Harris Awards. I was trying to go through there and, and I don't, there may be just one or two that I don't know who they are, but um, so I'm taking, is Mr. Johnson been the longest standing member? He's been the longest standing member. I don't know exactly when he joined. Um, I mean, everybody I think realizes uh, Alan is in his 90s. He rarely misses a meeting. He virtually attends, aside from the parking up at Orkney, which would be physically impossible for him. But he supports every event that we have in town. He was there on the 5th of July, mm -hmm. cutting and handing out watermelons. And Alan, as I'm sure he is to other members of the club, he's an inspiration to me. I mean, he comes to the meeting, he's cheerful, 
he wants to engage, he wants to be involved. I mean, unfortunately, tragically, he lost uh, his wife a while back. And I mean, I know that's difficult to deal with and he's still dealing with it, but yet he's there to cheer people up. He welcomes new members of the club, welcomes guest members, and he just makes people feel at home. He's one of the, he's the kind of guy I want to grow up to be <laughs> when, when I'm 90 years old. And and we're talking about Mr. Alan Johnson, um, but in 1966 and 1967, he was the president. Yeah. Um, he, he's a great guy, local business owner, property sure. owner here in town. He is my go-to for um, something that went on many, many years ago. He was very helpful to me just about six, eight months ago. Wow. Um, he, he is a very sharp individual and knowledgeable about local town history and yes. uh, properties and such. But yeah, I enjoy seeing him around town. And then when I am invited to uh, the Rotary meetings, uh, it's enjoyable to sure. see him and talk and about that. Don't don't feel like you have to be invited. You and Amber are always welcome. Okay. As a matter, I'm going to give each one of you a rotary <laughs> brochure. You. I know you've gotten these before, it's okay. but uh, so, you could so just leading, scroll that away. Yeah, leading into that, if a listener has interest in the Rotary Club, sure. what is that process? What's that process look like? The process is um, if a member is interested all they have to do would be to show up at one of our weekly meetings at Chandelier. We meet every Wednesday at noon. Um, somebody would welcome them as, as a guest. Uh, there's no obligation. They can attend as many meetings as they want, uh, three, four, or whatever. But when they decide they would like to apply for membership, they simply fill out a membership application uh, our membership committee, who's headed by Jefferson Burgess, reviews that, uh, and then um, the club uh, takes a vote uh, as to whether we want to admit them for membership. Put it this way, I've never known an individual in my five years that has been disapproved, but it is, in a way, it's a pro forma vote but on the other hand we want people we want people to know what they're getting into and we want to ensure that they're the kind of person that truly places service above self um, back in the old days not so much now people would join rotary simply to put that on the resume and not go to meetings and that's really not what we're looking for we're looking for an individual that, uh, yes, will attend meetings, but more importantly, will get involved, get engaged in the local community. So, Chris, that's pretty much it. They could just uh, show up uh, at Sean Valley. They can uh, contact me, contact any one of our members. And there's also a misconception that rotary dues are expensive. Uh, quite frankly, um, I think the rotary dues are reasonable. You don't have to eat lunch if you don't want to. A lot of our members brown bag their meals. Uh, and if somebody wanted to join rotary and finances were a concern, I'm sure we could work with them and work around that. So don't let money uh, be a distractor. Uh, if you want to be a member of rotary, we can work with you. To, to get you into the club. Okay. And I know that I, w I was told, right, because sure. everybody says this is how it works, and then they don't know. But in a lot of discussions, I always thought that, like, it was mandatory. You had to come to every single Wednesday meeting, and you had to come to every single thing, and it was like there was no wiggle room. And for me, oh, you yeah, know, people, no. especially people now, it's like you, you're, you're busy. We all wear of multiple course. hats. and. And I was like, I, I can't commit that no. kind of time. And they're like, no, 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 no. You know, 
obviously coming to meetings it, th that shows that commitment sure. and then you're kind of up to date and you get that bond right. with your fe fellow Rotarians but I was told no like pick something like if you if you really are interested in the golf tournament right. like put put your your heart sure. and soul in the golf yeah. tournament help where you can and you don't have to feel so um, it's not what do I want to say it's an obligation Obligated. versus I think sometimes when you're volunteering um, you want to volunteer the time that you have right. and what you can give and then sometimes it turns into an obligation and then that's when you get stressed out right. and then the love isn't there and that's not what you guys are about no, um, so just throwing that out there if anybody has told you that you know they're like back there with the whip and you have to come and do this and that then they're really easy to get along with I know that meeting everybody there everybody's so jolly and I really enjoy coming okay. to the meetings and working with everybody so well, thank you and, and like you Amber indicated our motto is service above self and we realize some people who are in the workforce can't come to our meetings it's physically impossible so we just say as long as you demonstrate service above self at work or with your family that's good enough for us and just plug in where you can even if it's only one event a year uh, where uh, you want to work the golf tournament or you want to park cars up at Orkney for a couple nights that that's fine we're okay with that so thanks well we uh, have about eight minutes Amber All right. well the time has flown well. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad we're having fun Ross, we uh, encourage you to stay, and we we will end today's podcast on some town business sure. and events. Um, but please check out the New Market Rotary Club's Facebook page, web page. If you have interest, you can find Ross and other numbers of contacts on the the web page and the Facebook page, and. Uh, look through some of the pictures of the events that they help with around town and other projects and always give a like we we like yes. likes on we social like media likes. here okay. yes <laughs> well, likes follow make sure it, you go to those notifications and those it's not on just highlights you want to get everything we yeah. are in november so just the season, Amber. Oh, yes. Uh, so it, November is kind of a, an odd month for me because it's the one month that it's not packed with a whole bunch of events. Odd, me odd meaning you don't have every Friday and Saturday <laughs> planned out? Is that, yeah, that's odd. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I feel like it's like my, my breathing period. Like November is my breathing month. Um, so I do look forward to that because mentally by November I'm just like, I need to breathe and have a moment. But... And eat a bunch of turkey. And eat, yeah, eat a bunch of turkey and then take a nap. Speaking of turkey, I will throw out there that the Rotary does a turkey giveaway with the food pantry. Yes. Uh, every year, and they give out lots and lots of turkeys to those in need. So there's another another Rotarian no, thank you. Uh, bit there. And for this month, things that you can look forward to is the beginning of this month, the Flashlight Candy Cane Hunt registration is open, and you can find that link on the Flashlight Candy Cane Hunt Facebook event and on our website. So just remember it is our newly updated website. Yes, it's so wonderful. It's beautiful. It's I, I think that it's easier to navigate. Uh, a lot of great information that's in there and adding some new information that maybe we didn't have before or it was there but not um, easily accessible and I'm just really excited about all the work that and we've put you into can it. Check that out on your desktop computer, your mobile device, your yes. iPad. All, all of the things. And we're, we're really you have proud of that. Access to the internet on. Yes, we, we are really proud <laughs> of it. And Ross shows us his yes. jitterbug <laughs> But great. That's okay. You, I'm sure you have a uh, desktop computer or yes, laptop so somewhere. Yes. So, and so the flashlight candy cane hunt. It is registration is required, and because I, I only have limited spots available, and so you need to make sure you get on there and get signed up for it. And please remember that if if for some reason you know life happens and you realize you've registered and then you can't make it, please let me know. Um, I always have a wait list, and there's some other kiddos that would really love to come take that spot. And um, 
I'm always reaching out even last minute to folks saying, hey, I've got some spaces available. So please just be mindful of others. If you just realize you can't have, you know, can't come, that's fine. Um, just let me know. There really isn't any major events in November. However, there is the Small Business Saturday that is um, November 26th and 20, well, 26th and 27th. It's Small Business Saturday, but you kind of figure the weekend right up there after Thanksgiving. So just remember, and uh, I think it was last month's podcast, um, we talked with Kathy. Was that, that was last month, yeah. All of them are running together. But, you know, we've talked about shopping local and how you can find a lot of really neat things here and things that maybe you were looking for elsewhere and couldn't find it, and you come here and find it. So try, try your local shops first and come down on Small Business Saturday. A lot of the businesses downtown have sales and you know, are waiting for you to come in and visit with them and, and shop. And they have some really cool things waiting for gifting. And yeah, Christmas we, is around the corner. Amber and I will uh, challenge you to buy Christmas gifts locally. Yes. Um, we, we talk about this every podcast because we're both or you and I feel this is important, but you you literally don't know what we have until you go in these shops. Mm -hmm. um, the Valley Sports Connection, gift cards at John Henry's, or the cafe, or, you know, maybe you need that new dining room table for Thanksgiving. Go by and see Mark and Carla at the home store. Yep. You need some decorations, you can go there, you can go to Simple Tom's. And, you know, we have other fast food restaurants for, um, and Southern Kitchen and Kathy's and Elise goes and the Miller Grill. Like we could go on yeah. about all of our wonderful businesses and what they, how wonderful they are. But we challenge you, if you're listening, to go and try these places out and just see what they have. Find those unique gifts. And I will be, over the course of the month, I will be doing some lives on oh, social I enjoy, media I enjoy that. and that way I I like I used to call it um, small town small shops big treasures but that is way too that's a mouthful and it's really hard to say and it never comes out right so we'll just do One small shops time. big treasures <laughs> yeah no we won't do that if I if I can say it like once and I'm good and I'm not like <laughs> like spitting everywhere then I'm, <laughs> I'm doing good but um but yeah the purpose for that is just to kind of get in the stores meet the owners and Kind of go around and see what they have available because we all are we all do it we all sit at the light and we're like hey look at that store i'm going to go in there one day one day when well one day never comes and i'm i am going to say i am guilty of that i have done it um, we all do it and you know no judgment but this i like to think that this gives you that time to get in the store and kind of see what they have but i definitely don't cover everything so you need need to come in and see these shops but um, also looking forward looking ahead into December the first weekend as always um, is our tis the season our tis the season activities so we'll have the open market and we'll have uh, music downtown by Sound Solutions he'll be out there playing wonderful music along with our wonderful beautiful downtown lights thanks to all the, the sponsors that have helped with that a few years ago Downtown looks great during the holidays because of the lighting. And then we'll also have um, the, the stores, all the shops do open houses. We'll have parade, all the details for Tis the Season activities you can find on our Facebook page and on the website. So all details are there if you want to participate in the parade. Um, sign up is there as well. So come on out. Oh, and we're going to continue doing the Shop Local Passport. So the, all that is is you get this little passport. It's a, just a piece of paper with <laughs> blocks. It looks like a bingo card. And you just get stamps and go around. And if you get so many stamps from the shopping, then you get a free ornament. So. And, and maybe you mentioned this, but visit the park, see the lights, the yes. public works staff. They do an amazing a, job. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of hard work and effort into that to get it decorated. We appreciate them. And just in closing, would remind you the holiday seasons, don't drink and drive. Yeah, be safe. Yeah, make good choices with that. Um, one thing that I have been seeing a lot of, just real quick, is still people on their phones driving. Oh, like, I saw that the other day. Yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Get you a hands-free device and 
um, please. So, in closing, Ross, thank you again oh, you're for all the information. We enjoyed this. I did. I did. It's we, great. as in it, Amber and I, stay safe over the holidays and give us a like on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, social media. Take care. Cool.